Joining me now, the man who filed articles of impeachment against Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein uh, after the Congress was stonewalled in requests for documents on the Mueller witch hunt, uh, the Russia probe, as some like to still call it. Three-term congressman, chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, Congressman Mark Meadows with us. Congressman, great to have you here. Uh, Rod Rosenstein, now the subject of a, immense uh, speculation as well as curiosity, uh, and has become the, the focus uh, of all that is going on uh, in a Justice Department that is obviously just simply uh, off the rails. What do you expect to happen? Let's first of all uh, acknowledge that the president is going to meet with him Thursday. What do you expect uh, the president will do or uh, Rosenstein might do? What will be the result of that meeting? Well, I mean, obviously, it's, it's up to the president to, to decide what's going to happen. But I can tell you this, that uh, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein uh, actually uh, did resign over the weekend, or at least communicated that. And I think the prudent thing for uh, the president to do is, is accept that resignation on Thursday. Uh, I, he was not going to be fired. Uh, I, I think everybody needs their day in court. In fact, that's what we're advocating for here on Capitol Hill. We believe that Rod Rosenstein needs to come before Congress under oath and tell the American people what he did or did not do uh, because he hasn't really denied it. And any time that you have the second highest official in the Department of Justice suggesting that they should wear a wire and tape the president of the, of the United States, it's not mm -hmm. only wrong, but it has national security implications as well. And so I think the time is now for Rod Rosenstein to be held accountable. And I, I want to be very clear in, in, uh, in my understanding and, uh, this, and the audience of this broadcast uh, in understanding what you're saying. Do you believe the president should accept Rosenstein's resignation uh, as, as you said it was tendered? Uh, are you saying that if he this does again resign, that should be accepted? No, I, I think he ought to accept the one that he actually conveyed on Saturday. Now, okay. he may be having second thoughts and all of that. And I, my understanding is, is that not only will he be talking to the president, but that he probably has talked to the president already. Uh, but, but really, it's about restoring trust. And, mm -hmm. and what we do know is there are a number of documents that indicate that there are real problems at the FBI and DOJ. And to find out that uh, Rod Rosenstein was communicating these kinds of things, whether he was joking or not, you just don't do that. And it is uh, emblematic of the problems that we know exist. And it's time to be part of the cleanup crew. And I think Rod could do that best by resigning and allowing someone else to take his place. Allow someone else. And, and uh, as you well know, and to your great frustration, uh, uh, Jeff Sessions remains attorney general. Uh, you've called for his removal as well. Uh, what is the president to do? He is confounded with a man who uh, obviously has disappointed him immensely in his failure to, to live up to, to even elementary uh, requirements of that uh, very important job. Uh, and now, uh, Rosenstein, what should, the, what should the president look toward as a is a view of the Justice Department with the removal, uh, whether it's by his own hand or the president's, uh, of Rosenstein and with Sessions still there. Well, I, I think the, the big part of that, as you know, my frustration has been over the inability for Congress to get documents. Right. The president took a good step on uh, uh, initiating the process for declassification. I think he needs to continue with that. Uh, conversations with those that are working through those documents indicate there are a number of documents they could release to the American people that have nothing to do with national security. Let me give you one example, Lou. Sure. You know, we've, we've got Bruce or 302s, which for those that are, are, are viewing tonight, the 302s are kind of a, a, a synopsis of an interview that he right. might have done. Well, Bruce Orr wasn't even part of the Russia investigation. We have that. Rod Rosenstein has testified to that. So he was not part of the Russia investigation. And those interviews are with two people that do not have security clearances, Glenn Simpson and Christopher Steele. So there's no way that those documents could be classified. In fact, we've seen many of the notes. We feel like they would be very illuminating and, and truthfully will show uh, some of the, 
the inappropriate behavior that has happened at the FBI and DOJ. Yeah, when you say that they, they, they couldn't be classified, we have seen many documents that shouldn't uh, be classified, uh, but were by uh, at the hand of the uh, Department of Justice or the FBI. Uh, there's, when you say there are immense problems there, uh, they reach, uh, it seems, across far more than just simply the executive levels uh, of the FBI or the Department of Justice. Uh, there seems well, to be do. widespread political corruption uh, to deal with here. Well, I mean, and, and listen, the vast majority of our FBI and law enforcement folks at DOJ, they, they hold an, an incredibly high standard for themselves, mm -hmm. and I hold them in very high regard. We do know that there was a group of people, and yeah. when we talk about this not being classified, many of these interviews were done at the Mayflower Hotel. They were done at Pete's yeah. Coffee Shop in, in Chinatown. When you look at that, there is no way that it was a secure environment, so why not allow the American people? Our enemies probably have it, so why not let the American people have it? Right. Very quick question. We're way over, but I've got to ask you this. The president making a decision, you referred to the declassification, uh, to postpone, delay, or defer to our allies and not release those reports now as he had originally intended. Uh, this, it, it's in the minds of some. It looks as though he's putting uh, the, uh, the preferences of uh, questionable allies who may well be part of any conspiracy against him that emanated from the FBI or the Justice Department, uh, putting their preferences ahead of the public's right to know. Well, I think he, he has been for transparency from day one. One of the people that has, has actually communicated that to him was the very same guy that said he was going to tape the president privately, Rod Rosenstein. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what, where's the credibility factor there? I think that that's why we have to have someone that the president can trust so that when they yeah. give him advice, he can take it. He is for transparency. I think at the end of the day, we will see the documents. All right. Congressman Mark Meadows. Great to see you. Thank you. Great to see you, Lou. Thanks. Appreciate it.